In this section, we want to do several examples with scientific notation. But before we do examples with um, scientific notation, I think it would be a good idea um, to just talk about scientific notation in general. So scientific notation uh, has basically two parts. It has a coefficient, which must be between 1 to 9.9, .9, with as many 9s after it as necessary, so 1 .9 to 9.9 .9 repeating, 1 to 9.9 .9 repeating, times 10 to some exponent. So the coefficient must be between 1 and 10, but it can't be 10, times 10 to some exponent. The exponent is negative if the number is less than 1. So if the original number is less than 1, the exponent is negative. The exponent is positive if the original number is greater than 1. And scientific notation is used, as you will see in the several examples that we're doing, in order to write very large and very small numbers um, without having to uh, write out a whole bunch of zeros. So let's look at some examples of how we would do this. So this is a very, very large number, the distance from the, Andro uh, the Andromeda galaxy to Earth. And it's 24 with a lot of zeros after it, meters. So we would not want to have to write this number out if we were writing a paper about the distance from the Andromeda galaxy to Earth. So for this large number, we want to use scientific notation. So we need to convert this into a number that's between 1 and 10, but it can't actually be 10, so 1 and 9.9 .9 repeating. And that number is 2.4 times 10 because it's 24 with lots of zeros after it, we can convert that to 2.4. Well, the times 10 part is how many times we need to move the decimal place in order to make this number, 2.4, into this huge number. So this number is greater than 1, so it doesn't have a decimal place shown, but the decimal place is right at the end. So how many times do we have to move that decimal place? Well, it turns out we have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 times. Since this number is far greater than 1, the exponent is going to be positive 22, and the units stay the same. Now, we haven't talked about significant figures yet. Um, that's in the first chapter of the general chemistry textbook. But here, these zeros are not significant, so you don't need to write them in the scientific notation. So scientific notation, again, is very important because it allows us to write this very large number in a much more concise way. Notice that if you were to write 0.24 times 10 to the 23 or... 24 times 10 to the 21, these are all the exact same number. However, this is the only one that's scientific notation. This coefficient must be between 1 and 9.99999. If it's not, it is not scientific notation, even though it's the same number. Doing this type of methodology, you could write this number in an infinite number of ways by changing the decimal place and the exponent. However, only one of them is scientific notation, so these are not correct, even though they are the same number. Let's look at another example. Here we have a very small number, the diameter of an electron in meters. So the coefficient needs to be between 1 and 10, so here we need to put it as 9.4. Now, how many times do we have to move the decimal place to do that? Well, we need to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times. Times 10. Now we need to decide if it's positive 13 or negative 13. Well, this number is much smaller than 1, right? So since this number is much smaller than 1, it is minus 13 meters. So small numbers have negative exponents, big numbers have positive exponents. Let's look at going 
the opposite direction. What do we do if we're given a number in scientific notation and we want to write it out as a real number? Well, in this case, we have 3.547. We want to write out the coefficient. Now we want to move the decimal place 14 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, where there's no numbers, we fill in with zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The reason it's 11 is because we had three, di three digits here, so we needed to add 11 zeros. That's another way of doing it. It's a little bit faster. So this is our number. Now, if we want to repeat this number, it's 3, 5, 4, 7 with 11 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then not usually in science, but in other ways, they use commas to make it a little bit easier for every thousand. So every three zeros, we can write a comma, and this makes the number a little bit more readable. Okay, this is not necessary in science. We don't usually do this. We would just write the number in scientific notation instead. Here's another example where we have a small number. So we need to make this number... Um, to be less than 1, since it's a negative exponent. So we have 7.91, and we need to move the decimal place to 7 times to make the number smaller because it's negative. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We put a 0 in the front, a decimal place, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. So we had one digit to go across, so we needed six zeros. And if we wanted to rewrite this, we could write it as 0 0.1234567911. So now that's converting a small number back to scientific notation. Again, we knew it was a small number, less than one, because of the negative exponent. In the previous case, we knew it was a big number, greater than one, because of the positive exponent. Here, we need to multiply two numbers in scientific notation. And I want to show you how to do that on a calculator. And here I have two popular brands of calculators, a Texas Instruments calculator, um, and a, um, I'll, in a second, I'm trying to fit this all on the screen here. In a second, I'll use a Casio branded calculator. So for a Texas Instruments calculator, you want to use this EE key. So we're going to type in this number in scientific notation as 8.14 second E minus 7. So this means 8.14 times 10 to the minus 7. One thing that can sometimes cause confusion is down here it's EE, which is engineering notation, and up here there's only a single E. So you don't want to put the E in twice, you just want to use one E. Next, we need to multiply by the other number. times 6.5 second e 10. When we multiply those two numbers together, we get this number, which is 5.2910. Excuse me, let me write it out the whole way. 52910. Now, what we need to do is we need to move the decimal place and put this back into scientific notation because it asked for it in scientific notation. So we do that, we do it 1 two, three, four times. So we get 5.2910 times 10 to the four. And here I'm not going to worry about sig figs because this is a unitless number. Let me show you that again on a Casio calculator. On a Casio calculator, um, you're going to do something very similar except you're going to use this 10 to the x key. So in the Casio calculator, you type in 8.14 10 to the x negative 7 times 6.5 10 to the x 10. And this is now giving you the numbers in scientific notation. We use the 10 to the x. Notice we did not put times 10 and raise that to a power. If you divide by scientific notation numbers, that order that will cause an order of operations problem. We'll talk about order of operations in a minute. So when you do that, you get this exact same number, 52910, which we then had to convert back into scientific notation. So these are just two popular models of calculators. Again, to show them both at the same time, for the Cassie, uh, for the 
for the uh, Texas Instruments branded calculator, you use the second and the EE key. So again, 8.10 second EE. It was 8.14 uh, minus 7. And in this case, you use the 8.10 10 to the X minus 7. So they're just two different ways of doing the same thing, um, and you'll get the same results using either calculator. Let's look at the next example. In this case, we're asked to divide the two numbers. So you, you have to type these two numbers into your calculator using the EE key or the 10 to the X key. Here you will have a problem if you try to put in times 10 and raise it to a certain power. That is not the same thing because the order of operations will do 1.2 times 10 to the 8 divide by 9.6, take that answer, and multiply by 10 to the 5. And that's not what you mean. You mean 1.2 times 10 to the 8 divided by 9.6 times 10 to the 5. The 10 to the 5 is on the bottom. So you can't just type this in as multiply 10 to the power, otherwise you'll have an order of operations problem. Anyway, when you plug this into your calculator, you get 125. We need that in scientific notation. So we move it two times, and we get 1.25 times 10 to the 2. So this is dividing numbers in scientific notation. The last question asks us to decide which of the two numbers is bigger or smaller. So let's look at this when we have negative exponents. When we have negative exponents, it means more zeros between the number and the decimal place. So if we look here, this is 10 to the minus 13. So it's 0. Point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros, 3, 9. And in this case, we have 8 times 10 to the minus 6. So it's 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the 8. This number is much larger than this number, right? Because it, this is 0 .0 whatever, 8, 0 0.00008, and this is a lot more zeros before you get to the 3.9. This number is much less than 1 than this one. So when you have negative exponents, the smaller negative number, negative 6 if you will, um, is going to be a greater answer. Now you can consider minus 13 is a bigger number than minus, um, excuse me, minus 13 is a smaller number than minus 6 if you think about it on a number line. Um, and that would be a good way to think about this. The other way to think about it is there's less zeros uh, between the number and the decimal place for minus 6 than there is for minus 13. So this is it. Now in this case, you have um, positive exponents. So the bigger number is the one with the greater positive exponent. Let's take a look. So if we have 7.03 times 10 to the 5, 10 to the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's this number here. If we have 8.16 times 10 to the 11, we have 816, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that is this number. This number is much larger than this number, so when it's positive exponents, it's straightforward. When it's negative exponents, think about a number line, and num negative 6 is closer to 0 than minus 13, so negative 6 is a bigger number, and this is a bigger number as well. So these have been some examples of exponents and applications of exponents, and I will tell you, um, multiplying and dividing by numbers in scientific notation, um, as well as deciding which number in scientific notation are b is bigger or smaller, comes up uh, fairly often in chemistry.